Welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for joining me. It is Sunday the 31st of May 2020 and I wanted to bring you a video about uh, stamp positioning tools. So I belong to quite a few different groups on Facebook and other social media um, about making cards and scrapbooking and recently a lot of people have been talking about stamp positioning tools and which are the best ones. I have had some other ones, but the only two I ever use now are the Stampamajig and the Stamparatus. So I wanted to do a video highlighting the benefits of the Stamparatus and why I got rid of my other stamp positioning tools, but why I still keep the, the Stampamajig. Um, and the benefits of this above some of the others on the market, of which there are quite a lot. So um, firstly, let me show you how the Stamparatus comes to you. Um, it's by Stamping Up, um, and I am a Stamping Up demonstrator, so if anybody's interested in finding out details about that, then please do contact me. So this is the box that it comes in, and inside you have got two um, reversible hinged plates. So these are your, your stamping plates. Um, you get some instructions of use. You get a foam pad, which is great when you're using the photopolymer stamps. Um, the base plate, you have a grid design, which um, is great for helping you line up. You've got two rulers on two of the sides, and you've got a hinged um, stamp plate. This is where your plates fit on. In fact, I can show you that. So just get one of these, and these just my phone cables in the way. Um, these just slot into here, and this becomes your stamping platform. Because these are reversible, and you get two of them, that actually gives you four stamping platforms. So you can line up four stamps um, and do multiples of the same cards by using this, this hinge technique. Um, also, what you get with your Stamparatus is two magnets. I've actually put some washi tape on that one to help me pull it off. They're really, really, really strong magnets. Don't get them near each other because they will snap together and I've seen so many of them break. You can buy spare ones, but um, really one tends to be sufficient for most of the, the um, projects I do. I very, very rarely use two. And if you ever do use two, then make sure you never get them close to one another so they don't snap together. And these little storage positions on the bottom just make it really easy to store. They won't come off. Um, yeah, so let me just pop this back together because I've got one that I use all the time. Um, I do have two of these um, and they are absolutely my favourite stamping tool. So I'm just going to put this one back and get out the one I always use. So that is what you get as standard when you purchase the Stamparatus. There are other accessories um, and that's just what I'm going to show you now and, and why I keep the one out that I use all the time because that's got all my accessories on it. But that's how it comes and that's perfectly adequate for everything I'm going to show you today. It can be done just using that nice little tidy package. But if I get this one out, so some of the accessories you can buy is the deluxe foam pad. And this is lovely. It's got the grid on it, whereas the other one was just the black foam pad without anything on it. And this, I think, is a little bit thicker too. So if you're using stamps that are close to the hinge, um, it's better having that little bit of extra height. You only need this when you're using photopolymer stamps. When you're using the red rubber stamps, then you can just use the... Uh, this platform here but it kind of matches that so they work together and in fact let me pop that on there like so and the magnet will still work even with this extra foam pad they're really strong magnets um what else have i got oh i also have the stamparatus case you can buy a little carry case which is great if you're out and about with your crafting things and if i open this up i can show you some of the other things i've got um so there's room to put your plates in here um in here i have made some templates and we're going to talk about those in a minute so i'm going to leave those out i've got my stamparatus instructions my original um foam pad before i 
bought the deluxe one and this is something else they do the grid paper and this is cut to the size of the Stamparata, so I'm going to peel a sheet off because I will use a sheet for this video. Um, and this is really useful um, because if you're stamping off, I know you've got the grid on the foam sheet, but if you're doing a technique where you're stamping off, this can be like your little scrap piece. And in fact, I've probably got, I probably threw it in a bit. The last scrap piece I had was this. So it's where I've stamped off and so rather than stamp on your nice foam pad that you then have to later try and get clean, um, using that paper will um, just help keep things a bit tidier for you. There's also some little pockets here that you could fit. Um, there's, there's a strap that comes with it, which I don't use, but you could fit some ink pads in there or other bits and pieces if you were taking it out and carrying it about so um, that's quite nice having that little case so I'm just going to pop my templates to one side so I can get to them in a little bit because we will be using those okay so um, <laughs> it was interesting to try and work out as many uh, different techniques as I could to um, to use a stamp positioning tool with and wow there's loads i say there's, t there's 10 i wrote down but there's actually more when you break it down into simple steps so the reason why you might want to use a, a stamp positioning tool the first reason is to get a perfect impression every time and it's particularly good if you've gone to all the work of creating a lovely card and then you decide to add a sentiment or add something to it and murphy's law um, you will have spent ages on a card and then that very last thing that you stamp will be the thing that messes it up. So um, this was what the old stamp me jig was really good for. So if you misaligned something, did something incorrectly, I'm just going to get an old style, well, old style, I still use these, get a stamping block. Um, in fact, actually, I might use a bigger stamping block and use this stamp because this is a good example of quite a big area stamp. Oh... Oh, I probably could get away with it, but I'm going to get a slightly bigger block. Um, so by using just a stamp on a block, if you misstamp it, if it's not inked up well enough and you misstamp it, it can be really, really hard to line it up. So um, I still use the stamp image jigs, so, and I'm going to explain reasons why you might want to use it even with the stamparatus. But this was the old way of doing it, so I can actually use my scrap for this. Um, oh no, I've got a piece of I've got a piece of cardstock here. We'll use this. So if I get some early espresso ink and this stamp from the Rooted in Nature stamp set. Now it's quite a big area stamp, and what I want to try and do is imperfectly stamp it. So let's kind of um, stamp it not very well, and then I'm going to stamp it on here, and you're going to notice that it's not stamped very well. So what I need to do is I need to re-stamp it again. And if I had the stamp image, so I'm going to ink up my stamp. And then with the stamp image, you stamp onto this using it. So using this T bit here, you push this up into that. So it's up against that. Get your stamp stamp it on like so butting up against the edges of of this plastic tool here and then find your image line it up like so now if i re-stamp this again i need to line up my tool i might need to just move this out the way so I'm going to get this, I'm going to line this up here like I did before, oops, move that away and now when I re-stamp this, it's a big block, when I re-stamp this it should in theory be in exactly the same place, give it a good push down this time and voila. I have the perfect stamp, but I had to do it twice. It took a bit of fiddling because I was using this. Um, I now need to clean this off because my image is on here, but it's given me the perfect stamp. 
but just a bit more fiddly. Now, if you have the Stamparatus, I'm going to show you how much easier that would have been. Let's get a wipe out. Just to wipe this off here. And to clean my stamp, I'm going to use my, my chamois. Just wipe my stamp clean. Okay, so now let's try that again, but let's try it using the Stamparatus. Now, because that's still um, quite wet, I'm going to use this paper underneath because I'm just going to flip it over and do it on the other side. Um, I don't need the foam pad. Take that out. Just flip that over. Um, I don't need the magnet because I'm pushing this card up into the corner and it can't move anywhere. So long as I always restamp it with it up in the corner, it's always going to be in the same place. So I only actually really use my magnets if I'm having to do something where I'm stamping off and I'll perhaps use the grid paper to line it up and then I might use that to hold it in place. But because I'm just going to stick it up here in the corner, I'm just going to place the stamp where I want it so let's say I was going to have it here on my piece of paper close the the hinge and now the stamp is in the right position I can leave that stamp block there just um, so it's easier for when I'm inking up my stamp so I can put my ink on my stamp I'm going to try to get it wrong it's just um think oh it hasn't stamped very well I want to stamp it again you can re-ink your stamp. Make sure that's up in the corner so it's in exactly the same place. Over with the hinge again. And I could probably still do it with a little bit more ink in some of that. So let's just re-ink it again. And you can do this as many times as you like. And I find that with a lot of the black inks, sometimes when you stamp them the first time, they, they don't come out really black. They're more like a really dark grey. And so I might sometimes stamp my sentiment two or three times to give it a really nice black image. Now that there, if you actually look at the, the stamped, the stamp itself that pretty much is exactly how it should look so that's perfect so you can stamp over and over and if you're doing multiple of the same card if I wanted to do 10 of these I would just keep going keep going keep going keep going until they're all done um, I did do a project where I'm doing a swap I'm part of a, a swap using the new stamping up products that are coming out on the 3rd of June and as part of that group I had to make 11 of the same card so um, I did have a panel I was going to show you of what that design was um, but I don't know what I've done with it now um, so I, I actually used all of my plastic uh, stamping platforms because I had five different stamps that I wanted to use on the one card and they were all quite close together and I wanted to stamp them all in different colours. So having the four platforms was handy. Because I had five stamps, I had them coming down like this. So the one that was at the top and the one that were at the bottom was on the same platform. Because they were far enough apart, it was easy to use them separately. Um, so it worked really well and I was able to do 11 cards super quickly. So, um, right, let's put that back in there because that was just to show you an example of getting a perfect impression every time. Um, so, what it can be used left or right-handed. So, obviously, whatever suits you best, you can do it left-handed or right-handed up, down, however you like. Um, it's got two open sides, so you can use really odd shaped things. So for example, we've got these pizza boxes and they're like little pizza boxes that fold up. But if you wanted to stamp it off, you need to stamp it while it's flat. So it doesn't matter if it comes off the edge, if you're using bigger pieces of paper. Um, having these two open edges means that you can put a 12 by 12 sheet of paper in there and, and just stamp in one of the corners or along the sides. So it's really great for that. Um, so multiples of the same project I've talked about 
um, using markers to colour your stamps. So I've got an example here. I did have these in order, and I, I don't know if they've got out of order. Maybe they... I feel like they have, because I haven't... I feel like I haven't got them all here now. Um... Hmm, I have lost some of those. Ah, here we go. Found them. So this was the one I was telling you about. So um, this is where I had five different stamps. And so I laid each of the stamps out. And I actually had it down. You'll see that stamps off here. So I'd used the grid paper. I used my little magnet to hold it in place here. And I just went through and did each of the different ones using the four different platforms. So that was really good, that. Um, that isn't one of the panels I actually used for the card. I ended up doing it on white card stock and narrower. But I, I will be able to share the card with you at some point, but not until after the swap. So um, at some point I will show you that. So the next technique we're going to do is using markers to colour your stamps. So here's one I did earlier. This is the You Are Wonderful out of the same Rooted in Nature stamp set. And if I get that stamp out, so you'll see two things about this. Um, so it's one stamp with all the words on, but I've actually used two different colours and you can really easily do this. Um, you could use your stamp pad, but um, it's easier when you've got things that are so close to you could use a little ink spot um, I do have some of those to show you so you can get these little ink spots um, and you could use an ink spot to do the little ones but you've got to be really careful to not get any on the on the words so I find in that situation where you've got intricate details or things that are close that you want to get separate is to use your markers so I'm going to put that there I want to stamp my sentiment in the middle so we're going to put it about there. I'm going to use the Early Espresso marker. So it's the Stamping Right markers. These are not the stamping blends. You, you can't use alcohol um, markers on these. All it will do is stain your stamp. It'll dry too quickly and it won't transfer the ink. These, however, um, are water-based. So you can use this on your stamp. So here I'm just going to colour the UR words in the Early Espresso. Now I could, if I wanted to, stamp that now and then go on and do the main, the wonderful word. Um, if I felt that it needed doing again, like maybe just, in fact, I will just do it again. It doesn't need it, but... Um, so you can also do both colours at the same time. So let's find the old olive, I think it is. And if I use the old olive marker to colour in the wonderful. And because I've got some brown ink there already, I want to be careful not to contaminate it. And this is why you might want to do it separately. I could have stamped the brown, cleaned the brown off, and then gone and done my green, and then there'd have been no risk of contaminating it at all because they would have been stamped completely separately. Now, when you're using the Stamping Right markers, it may dry a little bit as you're colouring it in, especially if you've got a detailed stamp or a large stamp that takes you a little while to colour it. So once you've finished laying your ink down, you just need to huff on it, um, and your breath, the moisture in your breath, will give it enough um, moisture just to, to re-dampen those inks and allow you to stamp. So I'm just going to do that now. And then re-stamp that there. And let's see how that came out. That looks pretty damn good to me. When that dries, it'll be a lot smoother. We'll come back to it and have a look. So it looks a bit mottled at the moment, but it'll look a lot smoother. Maybe I could have done a little bit there in that F. Maybe let's just perfect that a little bit. Um, Okay, and we'll just leave that to one side to dry. So that's using your markers to colour in. I had one recently where um, it was a tree and I used different markers and I sort of coloured patches of it in, not the whole image, just patches, stamped that, cleaned it, 
did patches again in a slightly different color, stamped it, and then each time I did that, it just layered colors, and then all you had to do was color the bits where it didn't have any color, and it came out really neat, because what I was trying to do was achieve a, an autumn look, where you've got like, I, I had sort of a, quite a bright yellowy green, then I had a sort of a reddy color, um, and an orange color, and it, it looked really, really good, it was really effective. Unfortunately, that card was for a customer, so I can't show you that either, but anyway so that's um that's using markers to color your stamps you can also um i'm going to use a marker again for this but this is using the thinking of you also out of the same set so we'll just put um you are wonderful away and we'll get the thinking of you and this is using your inks to create an ombre effect so if i get my and position it where I want it to go and then pick it up on my platform I just want to get it straight I'm probably not going to use I'll probably cut these pieces down or something but anyway it gives me more options if I do it this way so I'm going to use um, two colors of marker and two colors of uh, so two colours of sort of like an orangey, this is a yellowy orange and an orange, and then two different greens like I have here. So the first thing I do is I use my lightest colours. So I'm going to use the, uh, what colour is this? Mango Melody. And you'll see there's two tips. You've got a fine tip and you've got a brush tip. And when I'm colouring in stamps, I use the brush tip because it lays down quite a lot of colour. So I'm going to do the whole of the thinking word. And the reason why I do the whole of it is that way none of it will get missed because where I don't go over with the next colour, it'll already have the yellow laid down and that's why I use the lightest colour first so that the orange will just go over the top when I put the orange on and where I, where I haven't put any will remain the yellow. So I just colour the thinking. Looks good. And then with the green, I'm going to do the of view. Now you could do, like I said before, you could do this separately. I could have stamped the yellow, cleaned my stamp, done the green, cleaned my stamp, done the orange, cleaned my stamp. So I could have done that. And because I'm not moving the stamp and the paper's always butted up in this corner, it's always going to be in the right place and the same place. So there's my green. I'm just going to huff on it. And then stamp it down. Pressing nice and firm and just giving a bit of time to soak up all the colour. Because unlike a stamp pad that can be very wet, these won't lay down lots and lots of ink. So hence why you might want to go over it several times. Now that that um, yellow is a little bit pale, so I am going to go over the yellow again. I'm happy with the green. I think that looks good. Just going to go over with the yellow. I'm just using the side of the brush tip marker so you can colour it quite quickly. doesn't matter if you go off the edge a little bit because this will just wash off. I keep dropping the lid. It's supposed to stick on the end but it's not very sticking on that one. Give it a bit of a half. Over she goes. And that's looking a lot better. So I'm now going to clean the stamp. Keep the stamp in place and then I'm going to use these other colours. So this time I have got um, Old Olive, so what did I use before? I think this might be Granny, yeah, Granny Apple Green. So I'm going to use the Old Olive and the Pumpkin Pie. So let's use the Pumpkin Pie first. And I, I want it to be an ombre effect, so I'm just going to sort of go halfway up on the words. Um, and I'm going to be a little bit rough. I don't want it to be necessarily a completely straight line. You could do it so it was a straight line. And if I wanted it as a straight line, I'd use a bit of washi tape, colour it, and then peel the washi tape off um, to make sure you got it straight. But I don't want the line to be straight. 
um, and then on the bottom of the of you I'm going to go in with the old olive once again I'm, I don't want it to be straight so I'm not being too fussy but making sure that I'm catching all of the letters puff on it over she goes just hold it there let all the ink soak in And voila, look at that. So you've got a nice yellow to orange and then light green to a darker green. Lovely ombre effect. Really, really easy to achieve. And, you know, you could do so many colours. You could do a rainbow effect. You you know, rather than words, you could do this on, I mean, you could do it on something like this stamp where you have different gradients of colour. So it really gives you a lot of options and using your, your markers um, just makes it so easy to get detail if you want detail. Um, or you could use stamping, those little stamping squares as well. Okay, so what's the next technique after that one? Um, Four ombre number five. Um, easy alignment for two-step stamping. So let's um, take this away. So I don't know if some of you might have seen my video that I did recently. It might not be on YouTube. It might be on Facebook. Um, where I did a technique where um, I was doing like an antique type card and I stamped a lighthouse and then I used an aqua painter and I went over the ink and smudged it all out, let that dry and then I came back and stamped again. Well, this is a way that um, it's, a, it's a similar type technique. So here, if I find the stamp, it's also out of that rooted in nature stamp. It's a nice leaf design. I'm just doing this on a scrap piece of paper because there is a die to cut these out and I will cut them out. So as you'll see, there's actually quite a, a bit of detail and some colouring naturally in the stamp. Um, you'll see here where um, the colouring is particularly, but you'll see it's kind of like like a little bit of watercolours got in there too that's also not part of the image. So if you want to sort of do a watery colour technique, but then you want to have nice crisp lines. That's what I've done here. So I've actually used two different colour inks. I've used a lighter and a darker ink. I'm going to use that. In fact, let's do it this way. Um, it, it's better to get away from the edge if you can. So I'm just going to put the stamp this way and let's just lay it there. Pick up the stamp with the platform. Now, I want to use quite a bright green. I've got a granny apple green. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my ink down. I'm going to move this over so you can see it a little bit better on this side. Sorry about the reflection of the light. Um, right, so I've got my stamp and I'm going to lay down my lighter colour or my bright green colour. Then I'm going to use... a water bottle I've got this here another really good thing to use would be a little spritzer um, we've got these little stamping up spray bottles I don't think that's water in there though I think that might be alcohol so I'm, I know that this is water so I'm just going to use this and not too close I just want to give it a light misting of water Whoop, probably a bit much but never mind and not enough on that little edge let's give it a little a little mist okay so I've laid my water down and then I'm going to stamp this. And because there's a bit of water down there, it's actually going to smudge it a little bit. So you can see here how the water sort of, as I've pushed the stamp, it's sort of smudged between the lines. So it's not really, really crisp. There are some crisp bits still, but there's some watery bits. So I'm going to put that back. And because I'm butting it up into these corners, it's in exactly the same place. Hence why I didn't bother using my magnet, because I know it's in exactly the same place. Get my, um, uh, my chamois, clean off the watery bit. And while I'm doing this, I'm just allowing this to dry a little bit. Because if it's too wet, when I go to stamp the edges, it's just going to smudge again but also I don't want to keep you waiting for ages while it dries so I'm going to use a slightly darker ink I'm going to use the mossy meadow um, color to um, stamp on top so that'll just bring back the definition into the stamp that it should have had 
So if I, oh, that's really inky. Um, in fact, there's quite a lot of, that's a very inky pad. So I've got this little thing of daubers here and hopefully I've got one called Mossy Meadow. I've labelled them up with each of the colours I've used so that I don't contaminate them. Um, let's have a look what we've got. That ah, mossy meadow right there. Okay, so let's just sponge that off. So by sponging some of that off, it just... Um, I think it would have been a bit too inky and not given me the real definition that I would have liked. Right, so now that I've sponged that off so it's not so wet, as I stamp it over, that should bring back the definition. So that light smudgy colour is underneath still. don't know how well you can see it in this camera, but you can see the water coloured bit. But then I've gone on and made it crisp with the, with the mossy meadow over the top. We'll see how that looks as it dries a little bit. Um, let me get my chamois, clean my stamp off again. What did I do with it? There it is. Um, and also, again, which is a very similar te technique to what I've done, is two-step stamping, where stamps are actually designed to have multiple layers to them. And the example I've got for this is this beautiful butterfly. The, um, the butterfly set that this comes out of, I'll show it to you, um, is called um, Butterfly Gala. This is it here, and it matches the butterfly punch. Um, we do have a butterfly punch, and I've got a feeling, I don't know, no, I'm hopefully, I'm just going to double check actually, because I'm wondering whether they're due to retire, um, in which case they won't be available much longer. Where is my new catalogue? Here it is. Let's have a look if the butterfly punch is still in there. Oh, it is still in there. That's good. Let's see if the stamp set is still going to be in there. I'm assuming it will be, unless they've designed another one with different butterflies. Um, butterfly, butterfly. Butterfly garlic, yeah. This is carrying over, which is great. Now, um, this is a photopolymer set rather than a rubber set. So we are going to put our nice mat underneath. Just going to get rid of this. Okay, and I'm just going to use the same bit of paper. Now, if you were going to do multiples of these, for each layer, I would keep the stamp on the platform once you've lined it up and then you could just go in and do like dozens of these and stamp them out actually i might um i might do several because it might be nice to cut them out and use them on a card later so you'll see this has got lots of layers to it so you've got lots of different of the fine outlines and then you've got these blank stamps that you can stamp up any color to give you the colors you've got the body you've got the antenna i didn't realize when i stamped the antennas on this one i used the little one i didn't realize there was a little one and a big one i should have known that now if you're going to stamp these out using the punch i wouldn't bother lining up the antenna until after you've punched it out and if you really want the antenna you could Put the antenna on the card and then put your cut out butterfly over the top because with the punch it will cut that out um, i have got an example of the butterfly punched out here so this is the the butterfly punch these are my little templates um, so if i was to punch this using my punch you'll see it'll take the antennas off so then I'd need to go back in and stamp them on. So if you are going to use the punch to cut them out, do the butterfly, put your body in, punch it out, and then add your antenna on later. So let's show you an example of using this, where we're going to use all the different platforms. So we'll start by getting our main butterfly. I really like this one. It remi reminds me of the Monarch butterfly, of which 
you get so many of them in New Zealand and they just look amazing. So if I put that there, or if I put it here, the reason why I want to put it a bit closer to the edge because if I am going to punch them out, it might be worth, and because I'm going to do multiple, I might be able to, let me make this bit of paper square, that'll be easier. Let's just trim this down, because I, I just used a bit of scrap to do an example on, but actually it might be easier if I want to do multiple, not to do it as scrap. So if I was to line this back up exactly where that was and with the photopolymer stamps you can see so I can see it's exactly lined up now if I turn this around oh not quite the right size um but I could do one this way but then I'm not going to get that out it's wrong piece of wrong sort of sized maybe if I put it there And then I could put it there so I could get two lots out, couldn't I? Okay, so we're going to start by using the outline. And I'm pretty sure if I look at this closely, I don't think I used... Oh, no, I did use black. I thought I hadn't used black. I thought I'd used the early espresso, which is almost like a black. So let me just get my black ink pad. This is the Memento T Tuxedo Black Ink. And we're just going to ink up our butterfly image now um, as I said before sometimes I will double ink in black because it doesn't always give me that really black impression so if I stamp that there now And I just want to make, particularly the big butterfly, I just want to make it a bit more black. So I'm going to go over it again. And because I'm tucking it, butting it up against this edge, I know it's not moved. I know it's in the same place. So I just go over it again. And it'll be exact. You'll still have all the definition. You don't get any blurs or shadows or anything like that. So that looks pretty good to me. So now I'm going to flip this over. I've got a nice big smudge there. Um, and do another one on the other side. And once again, I'm just going to make it that little bit blacker by doing it again. Okay. Now, I'm going to keep it on there just to show you that you can keep it on there and then it's all in place for the next time you do it. Because I have actually finished with that stamp, I now could peel it off. But let's pretend I've not finished with it, that I'm going to do some more. So I'm going to leave that one there. Then I am going to pull this up, turn it around, using the stamp that I've... The, the image that I've already stamped, I'm going to get the wing images out. Now I want the wings, see how I've done it in two different colours. I've actually used that Mumbo, ma uh, Mango Melody and the Pumpkin Pie colours. So I'm just going to take them off there. Um, let's pop that there for the minute. So with the top one, you can line it up exactly. Now these are sticky and you can see by just the edge of my finger. So I actually sometimes use my stamping pick tool to actually hold the stamp so if you get it, line it up, and you can see exactly where to line it up. Whoops, I've shifted it with my finger because it sticks to your hand. I use the tool to sometimes hold it down while I move my fingers away. So if I now close this up, and I want the pumpkin pie on the top, So I'm going to ink up my stamp. Doesn't matter if you get some ink over there because it's um, 
it's up on the platform it's not going to affect anything and turn it over and that's come out really good if I keep that there turn that around push that up in the corner again And there we are, just like that. So that's coloured in the top parts of my two butterflies. And just get my chamois and clean all that ink off. Now I can leave that there. I can, uh, because I don't have much room on my desk, I'll turn it this way. Um, so now I want to line up this bottom bit. If I line this up on my butterfly, get my stamping pick tool. Okay, I think that's lined up pretty good. Pick the stamp up. And this time I'm going to use the mango melody. Really love this colour. It's sort of a yellow, but an orange. I do need to re-ink my pad. It's pad's a bit of a mess, but it will be fine for what I'm doing now. And because I'm using the Stamparatus, if I find it's not dark enough, like that side I don't think is dark enough, I can just go over, go over it again, re-stamp it. Why not? Make sure it's butted up in the corner. And then turn that. Oh, should have been doing the top butterfly at the same time. Silly me. So I could have been using the, the colour in bit of that butterfly and, and done them at exactly the same time. I'm not going to because it's just, you, you've already seen me do it and it'll just keep you too long hanging on watching this technique so um, I shall do that later so um, the reason why I have um, these punch templates particularly for something like this butterfly it's all very well putting the body on the butterfly but um, if I put it in the wrong place when I stamp it I might end up with a bit of white here and it being cut off at the top or so you still actually kind of do need to line it up so I'm going to turn this around because I'm going to put the bodies onto here and I'm going to get that template that I had there it is I'm going to take it out of this Now this is really fiddly, the body part of the butterfly is really fiddly. So there's my little baby one. I might have to get my head in here to do this, but anyway, let's go with it. So if we put this um, if we put it where it would punch out, so you can see I'm covering that up. So it shows you exactly where that body needs to go. And this is where actually it's probably easier with my fine tip tweezers because I can grab both sides. I'm going to take my glasses off and get close. I need to put that, oh, I don't want to get my head in the camera, I might have to do it this far back. So because this is such a narrow stamp and it likes to fall over, but you can kind of feel where it's not. You can fit it into where those notches are. Uh, excuse my head, it's not really in the right place. It's a really fiddly stamp. Because it's so narrow, it just wants to fall over when I put it down. So, right, I believe that's in the right place. So I'm just going to pick that up so it doesn't fall over while I do the next one. Uh, I shouldn't have done that even. I can do that by... Because the problem is, is when I butt it back up, because this is a bit higher than the piece of paper. It might be easier to do it on this. It will be easier to do it on this one, I think. Uh, it doesn't marry up. So I need to... Let's do it so that we line it up on something. Let's do it so that we're lining it up against this, this dotted line here.
need to get it absolutely straight so that I find it easier to, so when I flip it over to do the other side I can line it up in the same place now I'm actually going to use my magnet here because I'm not butting it up against both edges I need to make sure it holds still I'm going to try this again would have been better if my piece of paper was a little bit bigger and then it wouldn't have been so much in the way okay let's So you can kind of feel it in the right place. Then hold that down. Oops. And I'm going to pick that one up and then I'm going to do the other one. Because these are going to be stamped in the same colour, I'm just going to do them both at the same time. So this is my bigger body. But keeping the template in place. And just feel the notched bits and then pick that one up too okay so if I get my early espresso ink this time I want to move the template away and so I know now that I when I stamp again I need to have it one of those squares in I've inked up my bodies so I can just stamp those down. They look really good. And then if I flip this around, line it up so it's butted up against this edge and up against that dotted edge, pop that down there just in case I need to stamp it a second time, although I shouldn't have to. Um, the, the magnet, by holding that piece of paper there, it, it's, it'll guarantee I've aligned it up correctly. And there's my second body so later on off camera I'll do those other two I should have done those little ones at the same time as the big ones but you can see how easily and by keeping all of those stamps on there I could continue to redo these butterflies until I've got enough and then punch them all out so really super quick way of doing multiples of the same thing all right let's just um clean these stamps off and get rid of those um let's put that to one side I'm glad that um, the stamp set is carrying over into the next catalogue because there's so many beautiful butterflies and just uh, it's, it's too many options of combinations and things that you could have. Um, they look really great. Those, um, those ones that I've done today, I'm not going to put the antennas on them. What I'll do is I will stamp them out. When I go to use them on a card, I can then stamp the antenna on the card and place the butterfly on it. If, um, if you were just stamping it where you were going to use them as they are, like that on a card, I could, you know, cut that out and have those two butterflies on their own on a card would look beautiful. Um, and then to stamp the antenna directly on is absolutely fine, in fact, what you'd want to do. Okay, so that's those stamps back on there. Put the protective cover back on. Put them away. Okay, so let's just turn this back around again. Take that one off for the moment. Okay, um, right, so we'll let those butterflies sit there. So what is next on my list? Um, so repeating patterns. So this is where um, this particular stamp, now this stamp is retiring. If it hasn't sold out already, it won't be available after the 2nd of June. So you'll be able to get them up to the 2nd of June and then after that they they will be retired and they won't be for sale anymore. Um, so if you really like this stamp set, this stamp set's called Grandma's House and, and I love it. There's some fabulous sayings on this, really great. But I love these flowers here. And this, what I'm showing you can be done with so many different stamps. So it's basically lining up a, a pattern where you could just carry on and do several and have them as a strip, um, which I've done here. So I've got a bit of cardstock here, and this is what we call step stamping. So I'm going to lay my flower out like so. 
and this is what I love about the Stamparatus and this is why I think it is so much better than some of the other stamping tools on the market. A lot of them don't give you the option to do this step stamping quite so simply and easily as this. Um, I don't need my magnet because um, I'm just going to butt it up against the corner. So you'll see I'll be able to stamp that. What I'll do is pick it up move it down to and then stamp again and it should i might just move it up ever so slightly because it's that bit of paper is quite quite a tight fit so line that up there pick the stamp up and then i'll be able to move it down to and stamp again great okay so let's get my black ink stamp uh, ink up the stamp and then once again if I feel that it's not black enough because actually I probably do need to re-ink my black um so as I lift it up if I think I oh, actually I'd like it to be a bit blacker than that lay down some more black ink I don't like to have my black too juicy but then I do find I end up having to re-stamp images to get them really nice and black that's so much nicer then I'm going to pick it up move it down to um, and then stamp again. I'm going to show you another example of this where you just stamp it down once but you can see here you need your stamp to fit within the this area or one or two or three um, and just repeat it and just step down as many times as you need to. So let's just give that another inking. You can see the difference between doing it once and doing it twice. Okay, and then doesn't that look lovely? And you could just continue on down the page until you run out of, of stamping area. Um, but I just think that would make her a really nice strip on a card. I just think that's really pretty. Um, so that's using the what we call the step te technique, which is this. And a lot of the other ones, I used to have a Stampaholic, which is very, very similar to the Misty. And the door didn't move down. So you could do that, but you'd actually have to move the stamp down. Um, so this is another example where I've used a word, the You Are Wonderful Again, which I used um, earlier. And I'm just going to use the other side of this piece of paper because it was just a cheap bit of card. I'd, I'd made a mistake on a card and I'd, I'd cut it off and then I had this bit and I've smudged it quite badly there. But this is um, using um, multi-generational stamping as well as the step stamping. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So we're going to put our word up here. You are wonderful. And you want it to, to fit within this space because this is where it's going to repeat so i'm going to uh, might use a different color let's use pumpkin pie because i like orange so what i mean by multi-generational stamping is i'm going to ink it once and i'm going to stamp it three times so lots of ink on there and then i'm going to go one generation lift it up move it down one two generations lift it up am i going to get three out of this and three so you'll see it goes from dark to i'm going to say very light yeah that's very light you almost can't see it um then i'm going to stamp it up again this time i'm going to move it down two so that i've got dark on the bottom then I'm going to lift it up, move it up one, so I've got that medium colour the next step up. So you can see I go dark, medium, light, medium, dark. So obviously you don't have to do it where you're doing multi-generation. You could just do full stamping each time, or you could stamp it off on a piece of paper if you wanted the whole thing to be really light in the background. You could stamp up on, on your scrap, then put your card in, then stamp it, and then just keep using your scrap. So that's just a nice way of getting like an ombre look still um, by using the same inking multiple times. So also using this step technique, 
which is really really good you can get the impression of movement um, and the stamp I've used for this example let's just pop this back up here put that away so in this example here I've got this guy on a bike now <laughs> this stamp set actually has multiple people on a bike it's called do the impossible great for anyone who does triathlon because you've got a swimmer um, a cyclist and a runner but you'll see here actually this stamp had lots of people in it and I did stamp it in fact is it on the back with the full stamp yeah and it just was sort of cool but just a little bit too busy I'm not really one for too much layering on top of stamp so I kind of thought I'll turn it over every piece of paper has two sides and so what I actually did was a little bit I say a little bit naughty it's not naughty it's fine I actually chopped the stamp in half so this was one stamp and you can see I've just chopped it in half so I could still use it as one stamp again if I wanted so I could lay it down, put my other stamp right up there like that. And it's just like it was one stamp again. But I just want the single cyclist on his own. So if I get a clean piece of paper and um, actually do them this way, just because I want to keep this on my right. I work better with it on my right. So here I'm going to ink him full strength. be sticky okay so let's um pick the stamp up first and i want to like i say i need to re-ink this pad so i really want to make sure there's plenty of ink on this because i'm going to do that generational stamping again to give me the movement so i'm going to lay him down at full strength pick him up move him down one stamp him again Pick him up, move him down one, stamp him again. Now doesn't that look like he's cycling across the page? I think that's really great. So your one that's at full strength has to be the one riding off. If I'd have done that full strength and then those, it would have looked like, I don't know, I don't even think it would have looked like he was cycling backwards. So the one that you want full strength needs to be the kind of top layer, really. So you need to position that so that that is the top layer. Um, so yes, so that's using the hinge step. And because you've got two platforms, you can do it on, on both sides. Um, and you can get some really great techniques out of just using the step stamping. And that's why I think this is different um, to so many of the other stamp positioning tools on the market. I don't know of another one that lets you so easily do that. Um, let me put my cut up stamp back together. Now I do have a feeling that this stamp might be retiring, which will be a real shame. In which case, if you want this one, you need to get it by the 2nd of June if it hasn't already sold out. Uh, right, so what is next on our list? Um, so next on the list... Um, multiples are repeating seven stamp indicate motion right number eight mirror image here's an example of a mirror image so the actual image the actual stamped image is I think this guy here <laughs> um, but I wanted them to look like they were talking to each other so if I was stamping two of these they would be facing the same way because the stamp only faces one way so what I wanted to do was do this mirror image so he's stamping so he's looking at him so if I grab that stamp set um, animal outing I love this stamp set. It has matching dies with it, and I just love it. Now, it is one of the older style clear mount. They now come in the cling mount, and the cling mount, you can use the stickers. Um, with, the, with the old uh, clear mount, the stickers didn't work very well, and so they very easily fell off. So you'll see I haven't put the stickers on this. Um, I have used, I have actually with some other stamps, 
um, th this was an old clear mount too, but I've actually turned it into a cling mount. And with the new catalogue, they're actually going to be selling strips of the cling stuff. But I don't know if you can see it in the light if I move it around. You can see where I've put some of the cling stuff which is the scraps out of the new stamp sets so when you get a new stamp set this is from a new one um i use these to patchwork on the back of these old stamps so that's what i'm going to do later on for the animal outing um but i wanted to get this video done so i'll do that and i'll do that another time so let's just pop that back in there so right we've got our giraffe so um, if I just use the example that I did before, just so I can position the stamp. Okay, and he can go to one side. So I'm going to stamp him up in the, in the memento black. Like so. Now I want him to have a mirror image. So... Mm -hmm going to use this here this is the sort of silicony bit out of something that I use with my Sizzix uh, Big Shot my die cutting machine um, and it helps to just add an extra layer when you're doing embossing and things like that but I actually don't use it for that I can feel it's got some little bits of like grit or grime and it, it wants to stick to it so I actually find it's quite useful to use a wet wipe to just clean that so because this needs to be really smooth and then just use this as a wet wipe I had the out the other day that's actually dried because I don't want the background to be wet but I just wanted those little gritty bits to be gone don't need that for the moment so what I'm going to do is put him up there. I'm going to put plenty of ink on him. I'm going to stamp him onto there. Do it again. Now, when I do this technique on this, I usually stamp it twice anyway, not only to get it really black, but so that there's lots of ink on there. Now, I had my image that I stamped. I'm going to turn that around now. So I've now got this blank bit of paper. I'm going to put him, going to butt this up in the corner, and I'm going to do that before I lay it down, and then lay it down, don't move it. And then I'm just going to... Just keeping the stamp there, I don't need to re-ink it because this is going to be the back of the piece of paper anyway. And now when I lift that up, the ink's transferred off there onto there. And because that was in exactly the same place, it's pushed down in all the right places. Now, as I said, these do have matching dies. So if you wanted to die cut these, but you wanted the, the giraffe to be facing the other way, the die cut would not cut that out. So what you do is you cut the reverse out turn it over and you've got a double-sided piece. So if you're um, doing like box cards, explosion cards, where you pot potentially are going to see the back of something that you've stamped, I think it's really great to use this where you actually purposely um, stamp it so it's double, so that when you've got these little bits hanging from your box card that could are on these little bits of um, acetate that are just sort of floating if you catch the back of them the back of them is just as good as the front so yeah that is what we call mirror stamping now a very similar way but I rather than using this because this gives such a clear impression such a good impression um, I actually don't use this when I want to do a reflection because it's too perfect and reflections aren't normally perfect so I'm just washing that ink off this piece I'm just going to put that to one side because I've finished with that. Um, and let's just clean up our giraffe, actually. So I'm not using him for the next one. So if you want to do, do a reflection, and probably what I should have done is sponged the piece of paper first um, and then done, did the stamping, but um, I'm sure you'll understand what I'm talking about. So you could do a nice... Um, 
sponging where you've got like even a sunset or something then this is my tree in full strength and then you'll see I've mirrored it onto onto the bottom and see how this is nowhere near as clear the definition is not as good so it'll look great for a reflection so I'm going to do that now the lighting in here is really bad so it might not be quite so easy for me to do today I am using this backing piece of paper because you'll see I do stamp off up here um, once again it's a tree from the rooted in nature set um, and there's all these lovely trees. This is absolutely one of my favourites. And this too um, has matching dyes as well. So I'm going to put my tree, and in fact, actually, I'm not going to put it so central as I did that one. I'll sponge these backgrounds on these later. Um, I should have done it first and then stamped it, but never mind. So I want this to be nice and black because I will do it a bit like a silhouette, which is why I'm using black. But I mean, you could use your markers and do a brown trunk and do green leaves. Um, so let's just stamp that and I'm going to do it again to give me a nice black image. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my silicon sheet and I'm going to ink up again. But I'm only going to do one inking, make sure it's a good one. Then I'm going to stamp the silicon sheet. Now because the silicon sheet's a little bit see-through, and this is why I thought I might not be able to do it with the lighting in here tonight, the sun's sort of gone down, I can see it a little bit through there. Try and match it up to the previous tree trunk. Lay it down, and then just using my hand, just going to that on there. Ah, I've not done a very good job. It was a bit hard to see through this and this lighting. I was hoping to get it done a bit earlier in the day. But maybe with a bit of sponging we'll, we'll be able to fix that up. But then that gives you the look of the reflection. But the reason why I don't use that, well not only does that give you a really perfect impression but it's not see-through either. You need something where you can see it. In fact actually what probably would have worked really well might have worked even better would have been to use the image sheet out of my stamp image egg. Um, in fact, let's just do that. <laughs> uh, let's see if I stamp that on there. And then see how you could just flip it over. You can marry it up perfectly and then just push it down. And that actually, that's even better than using the silicon sheet. So you can see how easily you can create mirror images. So easy to do. Right, um, so that's that one. So that's um, doing a reflection. Just clean off the stamp. And would you believe there's still more? There's still more that you can do. So, um, one of the brands of stamping positioning tools is the Misty. Um, and the Stampaholic that I had was pretty much, I reckon, a copy of the Misty. It was pretty much identical, really. Um, and with Misty's and that, you can buy um, these templates. Now, you can buy a template or you can make your own. I made my own. So I showed you these very briefly at the beginning. There's two different templates that I've made here. Um, one would be great, this one would be great for making reefs using images and stuff. I've created this for the placement of words because you don't want to start doing it, get around and then actually find that the words end up overlapping one another or, or they don't fit perfectly. So what I did is I created this template you use them in conjunction, so you just line up these lines here, line it up, line it up, and line up the, the sideways ones as well. And then whatever word you're going to use, and in my example here, I use the word happy, but um, if I grab my word stamp set out, um, or actually, I wonder this, 
might be a good one. Uh, no one loves like a grandma. Let's see if I can find that one. Um, oh, where is it? Um, and this grandma, oh, and oh goodness. Um, oh, no one loves like a grandma. So grandma's quite big. No one loves like a grandma. There it is there. So if I was to put it down here, you'd see I'd be overlapping it. So by having these grids here, I can, it's actually upside down, I can actually work out which is the best one to use. It'll fit the whole word and will it end up overlapping, which it probably would even in that situation. So let's just line that up. So if I put it up here, it's only just going to fit in, but I won't get any overlapping, but you'll see it only is just going to fit in. So it's going to be right near the top of the card. So I'm going to use this one just to be different. Um, Okay, so let's line these up. Because this bit of paper and that I just need to make sure I'm using it right so that it all lines up completely. Um no, so let's I should write on it which is the top and which is not because I want it all to line up while this is tucked up in the corner. And you'll see it doesn't, um, although it's probably close enough. Yeah, okay. So now this piece is tucked up in the corner. So if I make sure it's up the right way, Put that there, close the window, and then get my piece of paper. I can get rid of that template that had the lines on it, and now all I need is this. Now, I actually made this template using um, some watercolour paper, and I did that because it's quite a bit thicker than normal cardstock, and I wanted to be able to butt cardstock up against it. So um, you'll see by putting this piece of cardstock in here, and butting it up to those corners, if I have to re-stamp, I know that so long as I've butted that up, it's going to be in the right place. So what colour shall we do this? I might do it in two colours. Let's go... Um, oh, I always use green. Um, I always use orange, but brown and orange look nice. So I might use orange and a slightly paler, something like the soft suede might be nice. Okay, so stamp up one in soft suede. Oh, that's going to stamp off, isn't it? Hmm, let's... I want to make sure it's at least... Ah, okay, let's clean that off because I've inked it already. probably used a sentiment that's a little bit big for the piece of paper that I've used. Okay, so I need to make sure it's within that, so it's probably a bit big. Let's, let's try that. Let's go with it. Let's just try it. Right. That was the bit I wanted to get rid of, not that bit. Okay, so let's butt this up. Let's re-ink it again. I'm going to move it twice, so that's one, that's two. And the reason why I'm going to use it twice is I'm using two different colours, but so that I don't have to keep cleaning the stamp each time I'm going to do all of what I'm going to do in the soft suede brown and then I can go and do all of what I'm going to do in the orange so once twice once 
once, twice. And you could do templates with even more triangles to give you more reefs if you're using smaller stamps. Um, there's lots of different template options and they are really easy to make yourself. But if you are making them yourself, what I do recommend you do is use a really thick cardstock so that when you're butting it up against it, it butts up against it easily. So it's quite quick for you to position it. Now I'm leaving my stamp where it is and going in with the orange. Making sure that's up there, it's all in place. And then what I need to do now is just move it one triangle. It does overlap a little bit because the stamp is a little bit big for the task at hand, but never mind. Because I've done it in the two different colors, it's quite easy to read it still. And so I'm just doing that, turning it twice again, butting it up. And then you could create some nice little centerpiece to put in the middle of this. So it shows you how, how quickly and easily you can do something like this. So you'll see with the with the happy words I did, I did them in a rainbow colour. So each of the eight points of this design was a different colour in the rainbow colours. And then I could put something nice in the centre here. I could have used floral stamps and created a floral reef, which I did actually for some Christmas cards I did. And I might have some... So I belong to a group called... Uh, 2020 Christmas Stampathon, and each month we set a different challenge to do. And this particular challenge was using um, non traditional Christmas colours. So, in order to um, keep it kind of Christmassy, I thought a reef would be a good idea. And so, this is one where I've used flowers, but I've done exactly this technique that I've done here. Here again, I've created flowers and I've just gone around using this template so that it gives me a nice reef. And here again, and here again. So just using this template, using different colors and different stamps and stamping around in a circle creates some great effects. Um, I actually think that it's come out really good. I'm looking forward to making something with that one. Um, and then I, I, use, I won't do this because it's, it's using exactly the same technique as I did before. So I did have one to do one. But here I've actually created a card. I've used that giraffe again. And I've used the, um, the actual, this stamp's got a frog on it. But I, I didn't use the frog. I better use this stamp going up alongside the giraffe. Um, and you could really easily... I actually stamped these sep uh, separate, but you could have easily done it together because I did it in black. It was the one colour. I could have lined them up next to each other and just done it really quickly just using the four instead of the eight points. Um, and then I've just covered up all the mess because there was quite a mess in here. But it just shows how you can use images. It doesn't have to be words. Um, and it's easy just to, to line up and stamp out. So... If you can think of any other ways to use your stamparatus, please let me know. But there are just so many, as you can see, and really simple. And like I say, you can use any size stamp on this. Um, the background stamps are amazing because they're really hard to ink up and ink up good and ink up properly. I remember there's one stamp I've got, which is the Buffalo Check, and that is so hard to get right. So having something like the Stamparatus where you can stamp over it, re-ink bits that haven't come out really well, um, it just makes it incredibly that much simpler to use. So if you've got any questions about the Stamparatus, please do um, let me know, contact me, send me a message, um, and I'd be happy to help. Thanks for listening. Bye.